So we know that the transmitter actually operates on the air. You can make contacts with it. And uh, the note is not too bad. I did notice that with different crystals you get different uh, tone out of the transmitter. Some of the crystals key very well. You get a nice T9 tone. Other crystals, no matter what you do with the circuit, it seems to have limitations. And uh, the oscillator being so primitive, um, it, it will produce some chirp. So uh, there are some basic things that we can do to the oscillator to make it uh, work a little bit better, a little more forgiving with the crystals. Uh, we'll, we'll do some of that in this session. Also, um, I didn't really mention that the, the IEC inlet, or the socket, as some people call it, um, is a filtered type. The filter that they have in here is a common mode filter, meaning it uh, does not allow RF to go through any of the terminals. Uh, so this is giving you a little bit of protection as far as RF escaping from the transmitter out into the AC line. So it's a good thing to use a filter like this. The other thing, and some of you might have noticed this, is how do you actually turn the set off? Um, we're going to be doing something that we really uh, shouldn't be doing, and that is unplugging it to turn it off. That uh, leads us to the chance of plugging it in the wrong way. Um, it'd be kind of nice to have a switch so we could turn the transmitter on and off. So I think we want to add this simple safety feature, a switch, to the transmitter. Also, how do we know when we have high voltage? Uh, there's no on-off lamp. You don't know that you've got high voltage on the board or if the set is even on unless you happen to see the filament of the tube lit. So I would uh, suggest that we add uh, a lamp that uh, tells us that the set is on. We're also missing the most basic safety feature of all it's called a fuse. <laughs> There's no fuse on this transmitter. So we could take the fuses right out of this box, solder directly to them, and put them at the back of the, of the socket of the uh, IEC inlet, and that would be better than what we have right now. Or we could find some fuse holders. Here's a nice little fuse holder. It even has a plastic cover that you can put on. I think we should mount a couple of fuse holders, one for line and one for uh, neutral, right here in back of the socket. So uh, there's several upgrades we're going to do on this transmitter and see if we can't improve it a little bit. And that's what this session is all Notice about. Notice how the output of the transmitter is a simple link coupled output, and we change the loading by moving the link up and down on the primary of the transformer. What kind of antenna would we use with this type of output? Well, it's obviously a low impedance type output. So you could use ordinary coax going up to a dipole, or you could use 300 ohm twin line up to a dipole. Either one of those would be a very good trans, uh, transmitting antenna. Um, a good antenna for 40 meters, for instance, would be uh, 70 feet of uh, TV twin lead um, going to a 70-foot dipole. Um, you could also use television 75-ohm coax or ordinary 50-ohm coax. But a dipole with this transmitter will provide excellent, uh, excellent results. You can ground this side of the coil to the earth ground. That will not cause any electrical problems since we're isolated. So if you need to ground that point, you can ground it. Do not connect it to the neutral, however. Connect it to the earth ground. So the ideal uh, transmitting antenna for this is, uh, this is a 40 meter transmitter, it would be a 40 meter dipole. So uh, 20 meters of wire with a 20 meter feed line. Now typically if you have a tuned antenna it's not important how long the feed line is. 
but uh, if you can make the feed line a half wave long, then uh, the output impedance is reflected directly at the other side of the, of the feed line. So if we have a good match here, we're certain to have a good match at the antenna as long as it's resonant. Okay, let's take a little tour of what we've done to this transmitter. Um, first of all, we've replaced the 10K resistor with the 27K resistor, and we've added an 82 volt Zener diode as a regulator for the screen of the oscillator. We've wound up a parasitic suppressor. removed the wire from the tank to the plate and replaced it with that network. We've added a neon lamp attached to the hot side of the tank, apparently going out here into space. We've added a bleeder resistor, which is a safety feature that discharges the high voltage capacitors when the set is off. We've added components that turn the oscillator from a tune plate, tune grid type to a coal pits oscillator. There's a 10 picofarad capacitor and a 220 picofarad capacitor along with a 1 millihenry choke. This goes down to the key line. We've added a lamp which tells us that the set has been turned on and it has its own dropping resistor off the hot part of the line. We've added two fuses, one for the neutral and one for the hot, and an on-off switch. So these comprise the updates to the circuit to stabilize it and uh, make it a little more forgiving on the crystals. So now we have the uh, various features added to the transmitter. We have the on-off switch. The modified oscillator with the coal pits components. We have a new Zener regulator with the 27K 2 watt resistor. And we have a neon bulb near the tank it will act as a tuning indicator. Here's our new fuses and our on-off switch. So it's sounding like a modern, beautiful tone, and all vestiges of problems with the CW are cleaned up, at least with this crystal. This is the same crystal we've been using. Solid 5 watts out at 220, and at 230 we get about 6 watts out. So now that we have the regulation on the uh, transmitter, the power output is moderated to about 5 watts. So by putting the 82 volt regulator on there, the power's actually gone down just a little bit. It's not significant. But boy, the tone sounds very good now. Let's try another crystal. And the proof in the pudding is trying several crystals and seeing how it keys. Okay. Just try a bunch of crystals and see what happens.
Sounds pretty good. The ratio in the coal pits oscillator between the 10 picofarad capacitor and the uh, 220 picofarad capacitor will influence the, the crystal as well. So that's something to experiment with. If you have a crystal that won't start, for instance, play with that 10 picofarad capacitor and you might find you, you find a combination that uh, will work for that crystal. So I hope this has uh, been a good demonstration of uh, how to convert a fairly simple transmitter into a good sounding transmitter. And notice we're not coupling very heavily. We're only coupling off the very bottom of the coil and that's going to be the purest output with the least harmonic energy. It's going to produce a very clean signal. I was also asked, can I ground the, can I ground the uh, shell of the SO239 connector? Yes, you can. That's totally isolated. The secondary link is isolated from the high voltage. So you can tie this back to ground, or you could put a 0 0.01 capacitor from that point back to ground. If you're using a balanced antenna like twin lead, uh, you don't need to ground that point because it's going to be balanced all the way up to the dipole. If you're using coax, on the other hand, it probably makes a good uh, plan to ground the uh, shell of the connector. So I hope you've enjoyed this series on the uh, W5LET Bare Essentials Transmitter. I think this is a, a good weekend project, perhaps a two weekend project and it gives you uh, some good knowledge into working with the AC line in a safe manner. And it's a nice breadboard layout that uh, is fairly simple to, to follow.